Uh, what are some of the ways that you would quantify success of the fall conference? Well, it would be probably in a number of ways. The first way, of course, is how many people signed up. And we know we're doing a good job if that's a decent number. And we normally have between 200 and 350 people there. Another uh, measure, I think, would be the evaluations we get afterwards. We ask everyone to hand one in, including the faculty members, and we pay close attention. Um, some would be just that ongoing sense of, uh, is the writing community still cohesive? It is, is it still uh, eager to, uh, to convene? Um, those are a bit intangible. Um, so I think we look to the comments, the evaluations, and uh, how many people come. Now, what are the factors involved that make the fall conference function well? We've talked a little bit about attendance. That's something you can measure by it. But, you know, in planning something like this, what are some of the factors that you can put into place to really make it, you know, sing? Well, some of it is just all behind the scenes and up front, just as any good event would be. It is a kind of performance, as you know, Stacy. You're here putting on TV shows, so you know what goes on backstage and behind. In addition, for our fall conference, there's a lot of um, personal attention paid to the faculty members, to those who call in and just want us to hold their hand and give them advice as to what class they want to be in. A lot of that needs to be done ahead of time. And of course, there's the the facility, whether it's a hotel or wherever, we need to be very familiar with it, on good terms with the management, and make sure that a lot of details are taken care of before we get there. Now let's talk a little bit about the guest speaker this year, Jill McCorkle. What can you tell our audience watching today about her, her writing, her background, her awards, that kind of thing? Well, I probably can't even tell you enough because she's had so many, but for example, she comes from Lumberton. She loves the state of North Carolina. She has been in and out of Raleigh for some time. She's written many books. I think our readers might be familiar with one called The Cheerleader and one called Carolina Moon. And just for one example, uh, she's one of these rare writers who's both admired and respected among the, the writers in the field for her craft, but she's also very appealing in a popular sense. And that doesn't always go together, those two things. Um, I think our readers and our, our viewers would love to read either of those two novels. I've just finished one of them, The Cheerleader. It has a dark side, I have to say, but it's a wonderful revelation of what a young woman goes through in understanding who she is. Well, that's really amazing. So who are some of the other speakers that you're having this fall? I'm glad you asked because uh, we could brag about so many, but one is Robert Morgan, who many people will know and love through the Oprah Book Club. He was for Gap Creek, and he's coming out with a brand new book this fall called Boone, a biography about Daniel Boone, and uh, it goes along with a, a, a big push in this state to appreciate more of our roots in literature and, um, well, our roots in every respect. So there's going to be a presentation ahead of time about a literary trail of mountain scenes where literature is centered, and the, the Boone uh, biography has been featured in that book too, so there's going to be an introduction by George Ann Eubanks for her. But one other thing is very different, you asked about that. We have a spoken word poet, which I think will be wonderful. And this man will really show us, especially us more staid people, how to get our craft out there in an exciting, in the moment thing. And if you know, and I know you do about spoken word poetry, it is absolutely what's happening in the world of literature. So he's going to demonstrate and bring some of his kids in. That's Nathan Ross Freeman. So we have a lot. Carol Boston Weatherford, an NAACP and Caldecott winner, she will be there with her books and her uh, approach to teaching and uh, writing children's books. Now, who are some of the writers that you've had in the past, historically? I mean, these names are, are huge. you got Robert yes. Morgan, who has yes. been on national TV for the Oprah Book Club. Yes. Uh, Jill McCorkle, a lot of these others that you've mentioned. Uh, historically, who are some of the writers that you guys have had? Well, we've had so many people, um, and, and it depends on, I guess, how we featured them. I know one year we had Lee Smith as a presenter, a major presenter, and she's so loved. Um, these are the kinds of people that you do see often at the Writers' Network because they're such favorites. One is uh, our Darnell Arnold, who I don't think will be here this year, but we've had her many years. Quinn Dalton will be here again this year. Uh, we have agents and editors, by the way. That makes our conference a little different. We have Lauren Mosco. She's a newcomer, actually. We have uh, people like Keith Flynn. Elizabeth Cox is a wonderful favorite who keeps coming back. She was at Duke for a while. And her husband, the editor, Michael Curtis, we're having him again. Tony Abbott 
He's a favorite. Uh, we're having um, Sam Art Williams, who is a screenwriter and TV producer as well. We're having, um, I think Amy Rogers has been there before, Pat Revere Seal, who's one of our best poets. I could go on and on. Well, I see you've got a copy here of the uh, the newsletter. Of we course, met, I you did. mentioned that early on. Yes. Let's talk a little bit about the the publication that you have there. What mm -hmm. e a little bit more detail about that? What exactly is the newsletter? How well, often does it come out? We call it a newsletter, but as you can see, it's really a newspaper. And although we're redesigning this, I will say that there are certain features that have been most popular that we'll probably always have. One is called Book Buzz, and that's for those people that have published a book or self-published a book. They send us a little summary, a picture of the jacket, and we put it in here, and it's great to promote them. Sure. We have free classified ads for members, and this is actually a great thing, Stacy, because people get to publicize their own events, whether they're teaching a class, or let's say in your case, you're going to a writing group, or you want to talk about your blog. That's a place for you to promote yourself, and it's free to any network member. Now, how often does the newsletter get published? It's been coming out at least four times a year. And as I say, we're going through some redesigning of both the network and its program, so that is what it is at the moment. But we have a lot of things that we want to continue in the tradition of the newsletter. Now, is there an online version as well? Not yet, except that we are starting to archive some of our best features on the members-only pages. And so they will be more and more available as we gear up for more web presence. What do you need to do to, to make that transition? It sounds like something that you guys are definitely about. Well, we Cynthia. are. Uh, so what's, are. What's, the, what's the big hurdle? What do we have to do to, you know, to, to get to having an online version in addition to the print version? Well, I think we need to reconfigure our staff and put some resources behind that kind of a talent. You know, we've been uh, a traditional organization for many years, but the world has changed so much, and you're a perfect evidence of that. So we really need someone who's much more web savvy than, for instance, I am or the, the crew that we've got right now, although they're all very capable and can each do some things. So that's probably the answer. We need a new person on our staff. Now, how many people actually come together to make the publication work? How many do you have on staff? We have um, a full-time person a couple of regular part-time people, and we deal with contract workers, too, who might help us with uh, a major event like Fall Conference. And uh, the newsletter, for a long time, was actually edited and laid out by our own board president, who is enormously talented. But we need to relieve her of that huge job, so we'll be getting more of a, a staff person on that. Now, in addition to the Fall Conference, are there other events that members can attend throughout the year? What other programs do you have? Well, we have had traditionally a spring conference, and how that will be done this year, I'm not sure. We're kind of thinking about uh, uniting with UNCG on a project that would feature small presses. So that may be a little different from what we've done in the past. Uh, we also have, as I say, the editing and critique service, which is a wonderful thing, but you don't have to go to a place for that. You phone in, set up somebody with us who would be the appropriate one to look over your manuscript, and then you mail it into us. We send it out to our published writer and teacher who's very good working with people, and um, there's that, that nice feedback that you get. We have a lot of things going on, but those are some of the most important things. We also have a Literary Hall of Fame, which is a wonderful opportunity, usually every two years, to honor the very best of our North Carolina writers. Oh, that sounds exciting. So, it is. So who is the most recent Hall of Fame entries? Well, we've had Doris Betts recently. We've had uh, the poet Gerald Barracks. We've had uh, the wonderful mystery writer Elizabeth da Daniels. She's no longer living, but she was a much loved, loved writer when she was with us. And uh, we've had Fred Chappell, who has been Poet Laureate. And we have had uh, so many people, Tom Wicker, the journalist. These are some of the recent people. I should stress that there are many famous writers out there that we haven't yet honored. Don't worry, we will. Maybe they're still young. And now, we're how, how does that decision arrive at? That, that sounds like a pretty political decision. How do you arrive at that fairly and Well, uh, let's just say in a perfect world, maybe there might be a better system, but I like the way it's worked. We have a number of people on our Literary Hall of Fame committee, and that committee has varied from 12 to many more people. And they have been not only observing the writing scene for years, but most of them are writers and have been tremendously uh, uh, respected in their own work. And so they have come together and uh, they welcome suggestions from anyone, but they do look very carefully into the background.